Good morning, folks. Excuse <clears throat> me. As I was doing, oh, another installment of the Red Book of Magic. As I was doing my um, preparatory review, I, I had to cross-reference a number of different books. So uh, I'm only going to do a little bit this morning, and I'm actually copped to where I was doing my own personal review of the spells, and so things will slow down from this point on. But we're doing our spells today. And we start off with rain. Old spell uh, causes rain to fall. 100 meter radius around the caster. Um, if it's not currently raining, this will create rain based upon the cloud cover table, which is below. If it's currently raining, the spell will increase rainfall by one category higher. Okay, so the percentage of cover can be interpreted, I guess, as the percentage chance of rain, which would apply to the cloud cover spell we did earlier discussing about, well, it just increases the chance. It doesn't talk about chance. It just talk about coverage and amount. So, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Um, it kind of makes some sense. So, if you've got slightly overcast clouds, that gives you a 31 to 40% coverage, which could be interpreted as percent chance of rain, right? Yeah, maybe. But then the rainfall amount itself is 31 to 40 millimeters of rain. So if you cast rain and you got that much and it moves to moderate, which increases by 10 millimeters of rain um, and then 10% more coverage. Yeah, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that one out. Okay, so this spell, rain, the rain spell, does require visible cloud cover. So you need the cloud call in order to make that cloud cover, right? Okay, this rune spell can be stacked to to either increase the amount of rain, good to go, or increase the amount of coverage by 10%. No, that's combined. So the amount of rain is increased by the amount of coverage, which is by 10%. I'm not going each room point stacked either increases the amount of rain as if the cloud cover were increased by 10 percent. The percent of cover, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, but 70, 70 and 80 are the same, and 90 and 100 are the same. Ah, I don't know. Or increases the radius. So either increases the amount of coverage or the radius, and the amount of coverage increases the amount of rain, and, and maybe the chance of rain. I don't know. Yeah. Still kind of fuzzy on me. Okay. Rapture. New spell. The target of the spell must resist power versus power. This is like the third different way we can say this verbiage, right? <clears throat> or they become hypnotized, almost comatose, barely breathing, and enraptured. That's kind of cool to cast some like guards and stuff so they don't notice you. You can just bypass them. That's kind of a mechanical effect I, just, I discovered as I was thinking about what's the mechanical effect of this spell. Because it almost seemed like this should be a religious type thing you do during a ceremony, right? But if, you, if it was a religious sort of effect, you should have some kind of, of uh, passion increase or something. But none of that's discussed it here. This says that uh, the effects last until the spell expires, but they will be broken instantly if the victim is attacked or endangered, right? Rebirth of Chaos, new spell. Okay, this is lay, this cast on lay members and initiates of Fed has the same effect as the natural rebirth of Chaos for Rune Masters. Um, and in addition, it gives the member a Chaos feature. I did not re look up Rebirth of Chaos for Rune Masters, but my gut tells me they get, room, they get a Chaos feature when that occurs. This spell also increases their chaos rune to 60% or by 20, whichever is greater. Now, whenever you get a rune, it's always at at least 60%, except for elemental runes when you're doing initial character creation, right? If you're going through life and you get something that occurs, you gain a rune, passion, or whatever, it's always 60%, right? That's the baseline creation stuff. So why we say increases their rune to 60%. If we look at chaos creatures in the, the bestiary, those who have 
the chaos room because not all of them do. They're all at 60% or greater. So, yeah, I, I'm not quite following this. Increases their chaos to 60%. It should be gain the chaos room at 60% or increase by 20%. Okay. There's a danger of get, getting this spell cast on you because you have a 5% chance of dying. And that increases by 5% for every chaos feature you already possess. So if it's cast on a brew, who already has two chaos features, he's got a 50% chance of dying when this spell is cast on him. Okay. Um, only Rune Priest of Dead can learn this spell has a range of 10 meters instead of 160. <laughs> okay, reconstruction, old spell. Uh, allows a time sequence in the past to be replayed for the caster. Uh, all the caster senses are, are, are affected in that location. The events play back in real time up to the spell's duration. So you can get up to like 15 minutes unless you extend it. Up to 15 minutes of what happened here some point in the past. The user is in a trance um, and no one else can sense what they sense. The user must specify the time and date for the vision to begin. So that's like a trigger. To me, that sounds like a trigger, right? You cast a spell and then when you specify date and time, then the spell goes off. I don't know. I think that what they mean is that spell effects start at a date and time that you specify when you cast the spell. You know, yesterday at noon. So from 12 to 12.15 of yesterday, replays for you here now. Or three years ago at 0600, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, refine medicine. There's going to be more about this on the next page. Okay, this spell allows the caster to alter either the potency or the usefulness of a random, it doesn't say random, but it is a random healing plant, right? You're out in the backyard, you find this plant, it can be used to heal certain things, and you can increase with the spell either the potency or the usefulness of it, okay? You can cast the spell again on this thing, on these plants, that further refine the medicine. And I forgot how that applied. Maybe it means it allows you to, again, adjust the seasonal potency and usefulness. Yeah, I've got this circled because I had a question on that. Okay. The caster must also spend, in other words, boost. This spell can, can be boosted with magic points. Not must be. This is also spent. Because when you boost it, you can adjust um, the plant's seasonal potency or its usefulness by a column or a row. And more about that on page 72, which is not referenced here, although it is the next page. Right? In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, healing plants. A whole page call-out box on healing plants. This is very cool, very handy. Um, you use your plant lore to find some random type plants that can help with healing, right? Very useful box text here. Okay, first thing you do is determine the terrain. Well, you don't really determine the terrain. You know what the terrain is. But the terrain table does to tell you how many searches you're able to make with your, your plant lore skills. So, yeah, if you're in woods, you can make up to five searches in a four-hour period. Now, when you're doing these searches, you can't do anything else. You can't be searching for other stuff or looking out for ambushes and things like that. But that's okay because you're not doing that. Your party members are doing that for you, right? And it varies from five in the woods to a half in tundra to zero with snow and desert, right? Although, there are desert plants. They can be used for healing. Okay, so after we determine how many times we get to roll our plant lore skill to find plants, we then have to roll, right? So roll the adventurer's ability, in other words, their skill, once per search to see if any plants were found. One successful roll means one plant was found. I don't know about you, but whenever I see plants, they're never solo. They're always like in bunches, especially dandelions in your front yard, right? There's not just one dandelion plant in your front yard. There's a bunch of them, right? Or if you're going by a pond and there's cattails, there's never just one cattail. There's a bunch of them. So I'm not sure exactly how what they're trying to simulate here. It almost seems to me like the number of searches should actually be the number of plants. 
because you're not going to find individual plants. You're going to have bunches of the same plant. And then I had the question here, oh, what about special successes on your plant lore or critical successes in your plant lore? And after I got done reading through this again, I thought maybe treat this like healing. So on a success, you find one D3 plants you know, together, right? On a special, it's a D3 plus, or it's two D3. And on a critical, it's a D3 plus three. Now that makes sense to me. You get five searches in the woods and you find, you know, a D3 worth of plants with every success or if it's a special, you get... 2d3 on a critical you find a d3 plus 3 of this plant right <laughs> my grandpa okay you then roll a d10 to determine how usefulness this random plant is right against what you know what will this thing heal because we're not talking about specific plants we're talking about just random plants in general <laughs> and you roll a d10 and, and there's you know the five different diseases five different common diseases right systemic poison blade venom or 8, 9, and 10 are all heal wounds, right? So just general healing kind of plants, right? Good go. Great. I love that. Um, next, you roll a D6 to find the seasonal potency. You then roll its potency. There's actually two parts to this, right? So there's a D6 roll, which corresponds to various parts of a plant. The flower, the leaf, the stem, the root, the seed, or some other part. And what other part there would be? I don't know, maybe bark from a tree. And now that I think about it, that might be something. But I would consider that stem. Okay, um, but the various parts have higher potency during this different seasons. Flowers have highest potency during sea season, leaf during fire, stem during earth, root during dark, and seed during the storm season. Now, if you've got a flowering plant, you don't necessarily have the seeds of that plant. Does that make no? Now, for flowers, it would be the pollen is your seed, right? Pine cones have seeds in them, but it's a flowering. Yeah, it, I'm not sure. Now, as I was looking at this, because I'm thinking dandelion again, right? Just a generic plant, right? It's got a flower, it's got a stem, it's got leaves, it's got a root. You uproot the whole plant, you've got all these things, because there's an effect of adding all of these potencies together, which is, effect, uh, is helpful. But maybe it's something else, like bark or pine cones or something like that. So maybe... I can see if you've got this other stuff and seeds being different than if you found a whole plant. But anyway, so you have varying potency between a D4 and a D10 based upon the season and the part of the plant, right? And that equals the number of points that can be healed if you're doing wounds or blade venom, right? Or poison, systemic poison. This all heals, the healing stuff just heals damage, right? Now, if you're trying to cure diseases, the type of dye equates to a percentage chance to cure the illness. A D4 is 25%, a D6 is 50%, a D8 is 75%, a D10 is 95%. Okay, I'm all good with that. I have no issues there. The exact potency cannot be discovered until after the plant has been applied, whereupon your dye roll is made. Okay, we do all this stuff, we go this stuff, we get our potencies all together, and we try to do our healing, we then roll the dice. <clears throat> they do give us a huge, you know, four paragraph example here. You know, first season, uh, Mercurian Nine Finger, Heater Plant Lord 90%. She's got Duck Friend, Adventurer, finds two plants. Uh, first herb is the uh, deep plant on the plant scale, creeping chills. But this guy's got shakes. So it's going to put, this is where, after you find the plant and get all of its potency stuff, right, that's when you cast refined medicine. So you can shift instead of. Well, this only affects shakes, but I need to do brain fever. I need to put one point magic point to increase that. But it's a flower during dark season. It's got no potency. So I need to shift it two columns to get to C season. That's two more magic points. So it applies here. Great, ap great mechanical application. But it's kind of funny here. They talk about root potency of D4 in the autumn. It, it's not autumn. It's, it's, it's earth season. Okay, whatever. Okay, so it says different herbs can be combined only if their usefulness against the same type of problem. If they are useful, if they are useful against the same type of problem. So that usefulness table, right? They've all got to be against brain fever. And we can then combine the potencies. Which gets back to my earlier comment about you know dandelions. You've got a flower, you got stem, you got leaf, and you got root. It's all C season, so it's a D10, a D8, and two D6 potencies that we can all combine together. Right, because we have the whole plant. 
And again, they must all be used at once. The magical potency of herbs decreases rapidly. One day after plucking, they're good for only half their normal potency. Seven days later, they are useless. Fantastic piece of information here. I, I would print off a copy of this and put it with my game stuff. My, you know, my, my stuff I keep out loose handy. Okay, next spell, Reflection. Um, it's the same. Both spells. Interesting, because this spell reflects spells that fail to overcome the power of the protected target. So I cast it on you. You've got Reflection 2 on you, because it's stackable, right? <laughs> And somebody casts a spell on you. You do your power versus power resistance roll. If you succeed, then the spell gets cast back at the caster. Good to go. The reflected spells on oh, the next strike rank. So take a strike rank to actually affect. So what, right? Okay. The power of the reflected attack spell is equal to the caster's power when the spell was originally cast. So I'm assuming this is attack spell caster, right? What, what does that mean? That, that's old verbiage. That's RQ2 verbiage, where your power went down with every casting of spells, right? Because you actually used your power to cast spells. We don't do that anymore. We use magic points to cast spells. So I'm, if I cast, my, my power is 10, and I cast a sp attack spell at you, my power against your power, 10 against whatever yours is, right? That does not change after casting the spell. Okay. So, yeah, there's some issues here. The power of the original cast is then compared to the power of the caster after the spell was cast. Again, the power has not changed, right? So if I'm casting 10 power against you, you successfully resist, it gets cast back at me at 10 power. That's a 50% chance of it affecting me because it's a 10 against a 10. So, uh, yeah, there's there's some poor verbiage going on here um, that I didn't cast, catch from the original book. I looked at my you know, my RQ2 reprint, you know, and while the verbiage is slightly different, it's saying the same thing because your power goes down when you cast spells. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, if the spell overcomes the caster's power, the caster suffers the spell's effects. Okay, good to go. But if if the spell, you've got a 50% chance, period. Because it's my power against my power. Okay. For each point you stack, the spell reflects two points of spirit magic or sorcery, or one point of room magic. Reflection does not work if incoming spell is too powerful. What does that mean? Is this some kind of counter magic-like effect? If I've got Reflection 2 up and you cast um, three room points of attack spell at me, then the Reflection just doesn't work. But if I do two points, because the counter magic is equal, then it goes down. If it's great, no, if it's equal, it stays up. If it's greater, it goes down. And here it just says, but the Reflection spell stays in place. I'm going to have to actually play with this to see exactly what it is they mean here. Okay. Oh, man, we're getting late. I'm sorry, guys. In fact, let's just stop here because I've only got three more spells I've actually reviewed myself, and I'm going to do more. So we'll stop here before we hit regrow limb after reflection. And I'm going to do some more investigation on reflection to see if I can't play out and give a better description of what's supposed to be happening. Happy gaming.